I'm Vivian Dempsey, and I'm going to analyze question two from the summer 2013 bar exam, the constitutional law question. This had three interrogatories giving you the three issues. The first was the 13th Amendment. This is actually not an issue because that is a Civil War, um, uh, a civil, one of the Civil War amendments designed to cure past discrimination uh, during, during slavery. Um, all the 13th Amendment does is give the right of Congress to make laws that remedy discrimination. So it actually gives no right of action to individuals. So it's kind of a red herring, but since the bar doesn't really do red herrings, it must really be there for a different reason. So let's see as we go through this if we can figure out why the bar would have had a 13th Amendment issue in it when that's not relevant at all. The second issue was due process. Now, procedural due process is not an issue. All it would get is a right to a hearing anyway, but there's no vested interest involved here because Paul didn't lose a driver's license. Uh, he didn't lose uh, a government job. Um, he dropped out of school voluntarily, and he was drafted into uh, an internment camp to force his education and to force him to uh, labor uh, in reforestation. So there's no procedural due process interest. Substantive due process protects um, the claimant uh, if the right involved is a fundamental right. And if it's a fundamental right, it takes the test all the way up to the very highest and strictest test, the compelling state interest test. Paul, the 15-year-old high school dropout, has liberty interests, which are fundamental rights. He has a liberty interest in his own body, which has been interned, um, drafted into this camp. He has a right of liberty in his mind, the autonomy of his thought process, um, because he's being forced to, um, to get a high school education when he doesn't want one. And lastly, he has a, a, a right not to be forced to labor um, and he's being forced to work in the uh, manual labor in the reforestation. So those are all liberty rights. Paul's parents, who are also claimants, um, have a privacy right to uh, family relations, to make the decisions concerning child rearing and education, and also to keep the family unit together, the cohesiveness of the family unit, which is being um, torn apart by the state's action. The substantive due process rights would take the test to compelling state interest and that the state's law is necessary to achieve that compelling state interest. The state gives as its reason its concern about the rising crime rate in the state. Um, and that's not a compelling state interest. That should really do it. Um, um, you don't even have to get to whether or not it's necessary to, to achieve that interest when the interest is not compelling. The last of the three um, issues given in the interrogatory <clears throat> is equal protection. You go through each of the classifications under, uh, under the law and determine what test applies to it. Starting at the bottom, you've got age. Age discrimination is <clears throat> a classification that entitles only rational basis testing. It's not, gonna, it's not gonna invalidate the law. Then you go to education level this only applies to high school dropouts. That's also rational basis. Then you go to gender. <clears throat> this law only applies to boys and not to girls. So that's gender classification. That entitles mid-level scrutiny. In mid-level scrutiny, the, the state has to justify the law based on um, it being substantially related to a compelling I'm sorry, substantially related to an important government interest. The importance of the interest, which is reducing the crime rate, I would say that is an important interest. Whether or not interning 15 through 18 year old boys only, and only those who have dropped out of high school who've never committed a crime, never been arrested, no relationship to crime at all required by the law, um, whether that's substantially related to the objective of the law, I don't think so. Um, that would fail the test, that would fail the law, and um, it would be invalidated. However, if you found that um, mid-level test was met, 
you have one more bite of the apple to be able to um, get rid of the law, to invalidate the law. And that's under-inclusiveness and over-inclusiveness. This law is under-inclusive in that it doesn't count uh, females. And it's over-inclusive in that it um, drafts all 15 to 18-year-old boys. And not all 15 to 18-year-old boys are uh, destined for a life of crime. So it will be invalidated at the mid-level test of gender. I saw another issue being uh, hinted at by the 13th Amendment phony issue in this question. And that is, who's going to drop out of high school at a higher rate? Isn't it going to be racial and ethnic minorities? Could it be said that this law has a disparate impact on racial and ethnic minorities? Yes, I think so. But disparate impact alone is not enough. It has to be showed, shown that the state intended to discriminate against racial and ethnic minorities, either the intent on the face of the law, in its administration, or at least in the purpose of the law. And I doubt if that test could be met. So I think it's enough to raise racial and um, ethnic discrimination, um, but I think that it would fail. That's it for question two.